Hello everyone, this is Rupa Gurait and I am going to talk about a practical session. The practical which we are going to consider over here is semi-micro qualitative analysis. Okay, I will just write down the title of the experiment and that is semi-micro qualitative analysis. Now let us first of all try to understand the meaning of this. What exactly this is all about? First thing is, when you talk about qualitative. Now what do you mean by qualitative is? It answers the question and that is, what is present? Or what is the composition? Okay, this question is answered by this word qualitative. How much is present? This question, the answer to it is what? Quantitative. So I hope you understand the difference between them. Okay, so that means if I want to analyze, analyze this shock, and if I want to find out with respect to what this shock is made up of, so then this becomes what? Qualitative. Okay, and how much is the amount of the contents in this? Then becomes quantitative. Alright, so this is going to be what qualitative and that's why I have made it very simple and that is it answers this question and that is what is present. Alright, next is we go into semi-micro. Now what does this word semi-micro indicate? My dear friends, semi-micro is related to what? Amount. So we are here to take in a small amount of a substance. During analysis. Now the question is, what do you mean by small? Okay, because small is something a very general word. So what exactly you mean by this word small amount? So when I talk about a solid mixture, so that solid has to be somewhere around 100 to 150 milligram on a practical basis. Please be very clear. Okay, on a practical basis, this is what is the range that we are talking about. 100 to 150 milligram of the salt has to be considered. <laughs> All right. Now, so this is about semi-micro qualitative analysis. Now, whose analysis has to be done? That's the question. <coughs> and that is all about mixture. We are going to carry out the analysis of a mixture. Now, the word mixture, I guess, is very self-explanatory and that is, it's a combination of at least two substances. At least two. All right. So that becomes a mixture. A mixture of what? Yes, it's mixture of salts. Now the next question comes up. See, every time whenever I say something, there is going to be a question. And to every question, there is going to be a solution. So what do you mean by salts now? Now generally speaking, of course there are exceptional cases, my dear friends, please. Okay, I'm talking about general cases. So generally, a salt is being made up of a cation, that is a positively charged ion, and a anion, which is a negatively charged ion. Alright? So the combination of this, a positive and negative, so obviously there is going to combine because there is a force of attraction, opposite charges, and that is going to give you what? A compound that is called as what? A salt. Okay, so generally, because it is going to involve ions, so generally we say that salts are going to be ionic in nature. Now, when I talk about cations and anions, we generally, in the cation part, ignore H plus ions. Because if H plus ion is present, and that too we talk about inorganic, yes, one more important thing is, this comes under inorganic chemistry. Alright? So, under inorganic chemistry, when I talk about H plus ion, so that means it is not a salt, it becomes an acid. Similarly, here also in anion, we are going to keep one exception, that is OH minus. Hydroxide ions, because if it is hydroxide ions, then it becomes a base. Also, in most of the cases, once again I say it is general, exceptional cases are there. Please listen with your open ears. Okay? There are exceptional cases, but generally what we say is about oxides is, okay, when I talk about metal oxides, okay, there are metal oxides as well as non-metallic oxides. But when we talk about metal oxides, so, metal oxides, when they come in contact with the acid, it results in the formation of a salt. I give you a very simple example, and that is, suppose I take calcium oxide, and I treat it with an acid, say HCl, hydrochloric acid. I'm going to get what? Calcium chloride. And that calcium chloride is what? A salt. So, generally, if a metal is in the form of an oxide, 
then that directly it is not being considered as a salt. When it comes in contact with the acid, then it behaves as a salt. Understood this? So generally, my definition is of a salt is it's made up of a combination of a cation as well as anion. Where generally we are going to exclude H plus ions, OH minus ions, and in certain cases we are excluding what O2 minus. That means oxide. But my dear friends, please, I'm telling you again, in certain cases. Okay, so that becomes what a salt. Now here I use the word about mixture. So that means I'm not going to take a single salt. Okay, I have to take at least what for a mixture, yes, two salts. And that is what we are going to consider at this particular level. Okay, as per your uh, particular syllabus is concerned. We are going to consider the simplest mixture. And the simplest mixture means it will be made up of two salts. And when I talk about it is made up of two salts, so it's obvious that it is going to be made up of two cations because one salt is made up of one cation and one anion, so it will be made up of two cations and two anions. And that is my dear friends, is the result, okay, which has to be presented of this particular experiment. Okay, because our final result comes out to be what? The two cations and the two anions which are being present in the mixture of salts. Okay, so I hope you understood what exactly is the aim of the experiment. We have a mixture, the simplest mixture, and that is going to be containing a cation as well as an anion as one salt. So there will be two salts present in that. We are going to mix it. Alright, so that means it will be made up of two cations and two anions and that is what is going to be our final result. Alright, so I think up to this part is very clear to every one of you all.